way from Idaho, I'm allowed to smoke on it. And I rolled this uh, nice little bad boy here. Young Blood Podcast. Now available on all platforms. Spotify, YouTube, Apple, wherever you enjoy your shows or your podcasts, we got it available for you. We're doing a solo because of the fact I just had ACL repair, rebuild surgery, restructure surgery, whatever you want to call it. It fucking sucked. It fucking sucked. I tell you what, I thought wrong. I got ACL surgery thinking that I was going to walk into this thing like, dude, cool. I'll be down for a week. You know, they'll get me in physical therapy. I'll be chilling. This shit fucking rocked my world, man. Rocked my fucking world. And that's because I, I've been walking on a torn ACL slash meniscus. My meniscus has been torn since, since Christmas. New Year's, and my ACL has been torn for three years. Full tear in the damn thing. Full fucking tear. Didn't bug me. Didn't bother me one bit. It, 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 it felt like it was going to go at any time. Like, I definitely didn't participate in anything that required me to cut left or right. I kept that out of the equation entirely. But when the doctor told me that the surgery is going to help me out and it's something I should really consider doing, because I'm so young and because I'm a snowboarder and because I'm, I, I plan on snowboarding uh, in the future still. So I took his word for it. And I tell you what, man, that surgery did not come with a warning label big enough. My, I was naive. I even asked them, they, they, they prescribed me Oxycontin and I was like, why do I need Oxy, dude? Like, is it gonna be that fucking gnarly? He's like, yeah, it is pretty gnarly i still was just like never dude i don't give a fuck it's gonna be chill like it's, it's surgery it's not it's not open heart surgery they're just rebuilding my knee they're not giving me a new back or spine or something and that was just my opinion which was dumb and being currently a content creator and trying to get this stuff out to you i can't i can't walk in my office i can't walk in my studio i can't even cross my leg right now to sit here comfortably and it's tough it's really tough for somebody like me who's super active, who can't sit still for more than 20 minutes, who has a hard time with any kind of paperwork, computer work, especially if I'm not on medication for ADHD. Like, I was just like, dude, I, I, I struggle with this, you know? In my first year of podcasting with Youngblood Podcast, my growth was never something that I ever prioritized at the time. I had almost 40 or so episodes in my first year that to me was the reason for doing it and was the was the reward i didn't need anything else at that point i didn't need any more i had felt like i got it the first year i fell away from it completely i felt like i was i, I a lot of it to me i think was because i felt accomplished i felt like i had already done so much with it which i had i'd put in so much money so much of my time so much of other people's time that i really had felt satisfied with what i did what's cool is i've taken a lot of my old footage and i've generated over 60 or 70 thousand views with it in the last couple months just taking some of that awesome content that i was able to create with my friends and actually learning how to properly work with it properly edit it and get it to the point of where people want to watch it you know and it's crazy to me i have such a newfound respect newfound respect for content creators for adobe editors it's no joke dude that's i have learned so much in the last couple months and i was already very in my opinion avid with photoshop i felt like i was pretty comfortable with it but at the end of the day content creators newfound respect for what what's being put out there and the people who, who have made a name for this stuff doing this it's, it's, it's in, i'm impressed you know kudos to all of you for doing this i hope anybody who's been grinding on this content creation i hope you succeed i really do i just i cannot say that enough that i hope these people these content creators anybody put themselves out there i hope you do well. i hope these algorithms really get, get place they need to be with this because there's no longer a human element in the YouTube copyright and the YouTube algorithm. It's my shit, my brother used to work for YouTube in Vimeo watching videos for, for copyright before 
AI could just search for it. He used to sit in his office and watch for fucking videos and report the copyright, or people would report it, and he would evaluate the video and then determine if it needed to be taken down or not. And I thought that was so cool. That, that's, that department's not around anymore. I, since AIs came, came into the world. There's enough people creating content now. You gotta do more. You gotta make effort. You gotta post every day. You gotta update. You will just be buried. You will be buried by the algorithm. You will be buried deep. And you will not be fucking found. I didn't have a single view on any of my YouTube videos in the, in the year that I didn't open my YouTube or anything other than a first view. You know, I didn't even open my views to see how much I got watched on my videos. The week I started taking my content and putting it back out there and, and improving it as well. Not, that's also why I'm making this tonight because I, I'm not trying to just put out my old stuff constantly and, and have that cycle over and over. I'm, I need new, I need new content. I gotta make stuff. I gotta put it out there. I can't just sit here and expect my YouTube to fucking make itself and I can't expect my videos to make themselves. I can't expect this to happen on its own. You can't expect this to happen on its own. It's not gonna happen. You gotta get out there. You gotta start the first episode. You gotta start that first pod. You gotta watch yourself suck. Shit, I'm not good. I just do it. I do it and I have the balls to get out there and say, fuck you, here's my content. And if you enjoyed it, sick, that's a plus. And now I'm to the point where I'm like, damn, you need to sit down and watch that shit and get better and make it better. You know, and that's, that's fucking tight. That's super cool to me. Anyways. I want to talk a little bit also about, I'm running a little bit out of time on my cameras here. But O'Shea Abney, man. O'Shea Abney. And I have been friends for so long, probably over 10 years, easily 15 years almost. And my man O'Shea has some really, really awesome dreams and aspirations. What O'Shea is trying to do is he's trying to get himself a, a name out there. And that's Sky Level Mindset. Sky Level Mindset, to me, what I've picked up from it is everyone and anyone is Sky Level Mindset. And if you want to know more about it and what O'Shea does and what he is, what Sky Level Mindset is, check out his page, Sky Level Mindset, on YouTube, O'Shea Jump. And this guy has some very, very, very entertaining content. He really puts himself out there, literally jumps off a bridge almost twice a day out in Twin Falls, Idaho. And I really hope if anybody watching this gets the chance, go go check him out. Show him some love. Show him some support. Like and subscribe to him because he deserves it, y'all. He deserves it. So please, man, check him out. And if you don't, you know, that's cool, too. That's cool, too. I have the ability here at Young Blood Podcast to do mobile shows, to do up to five guests in the studio. And if anybody out there lives in Colorado Springs and wants to do a podcast, does not have the equipment, does not have the capability, and just wants to collaborate, drop a comment, get involved, tell me what I'm doing, tell me what I'm doing great at, tell me what I'm doing terrible at, I want to listen, I want to hear it. My process of becoming a podcast content creator really started with an injury. I started this show back when I broke my back in 2020. And at the time, I had nothing but an abundance of spare time on my hands. And I've always had a really hard time resting and healing and sitting still. Hence the fact right now, I am doing another round of podcasting because I am broken. Down for the count. I had no idea ACL surgery was going to be like this. Giving myself the opportunity to work on this show, just like I did when I got the startup going, has been amazing. And the main premise of how this show really got going was me going around and interviewing my bartender friends, the locals, and, and, and anybody and anybody who is willing to give me their time. I'm looking for anybody and everybody that's willing to give me their time that I can get you on this platform and get you out, your name out there, your stories out there. Not everybody has the equipment. Not everybody has the, the knowledge, the ability to make these shows, to, to produce content, and to really give back. To your friends like and that's what my main goal is here is to give my friends something i've always wanted and that's a platform february is our fourth birthday how cool is that man four years of young blood podcast that we've been bringing content we've been bringing guests uh, we're coming up on episode number 50 of season two so that's awesome season one to me wasn't very much of 
anything that I'm proud of, but I, it's, it's still, like I said, I still put it out there. It's been out there and I can say I did something with it. And that's more than a lot of people can say. Now my next milestone is a thousand subscribers. I want to get a thousand subscribers because I did just get to 120 subscribers. And that to me is amazing. We have over 60,000 views overall on our YouTube videos. And I never ever thought that that would be a thing. And every day that I post, every video I, I, I hope is better than the next. Back when I started this podcast, I used to always do every show in one recording, one run. I had no ability to edit. So that's also what's cool, man. We've been, we've been trying to do that on every episode. I'm just not posting single run recordings, one tries, you know, I'm, I'm editing out the bad shit. And that's what I'm doing with a lot of the old stuff is I'm making sure to take away stuff that's just not as fun. Not as fun to listen to, to watch, you know, all some advice from me to you. If you're looking to start a podcast, if you have no equipment, if you have no idea, zero past history, and hell, even if you've never even listened to a podcast, you're looking to start a podcast, okay? My advice to you would be start with Start with your phone, don't buy any equipment, get your content, get yourself out there. Post your videos, even if it sucks, even if you hate the sound of yourself, do it and post it. Get past that initial wall of feeling like you are going to be embarrassed. Get past that initial wall of feeling like you can't do it. Get past that initial starting point. Because even if you never get to 100,000, 200,000, 100, even if you never get to five views, you still can tell yourself you did it. And that's the only person that you should be trying to impress in this industry is yourself. Because once you get to the point where you can look at your content and say, wow, that's good, then you'll be great. You'll be happy. You'll be satisfied. You won't give a fuck if you have 100 views. You won't give a fuck if you have a million. You'll be proud of yourself for what you've done. You learned how to do something and you can take it somewhere. Or you choose to take this on you. Who gives a fuck if anybody wants to do it? And also, do not post your podcast on any social media when you are just starting out. Just do not do it. If you are if you're brand new to podcasting, you just got your first episode, you just got your first show, save that seed. Plan it another fucking day. Save that fucking seed and plan it another day. Because if you use that seed too early, you're going to burn people out. They're going to look at your post and be like, God damn it, another fucking dude or another bro starting a podcast. Wait a while. Wait till you feel established. Wait till, wait till you can tell somebody you have an established podcast and you feel proud about it. And then maybe consider going on social media and trying to get people to watch your show. Don't get me wrong. You put 10 days of production value and really think about your episode and prepare for it before it's done. Then maybe consider posting your first podcast on your on your social media. That's just my opinion. Quantity over quality as well. Okay. Once you get to the point of feeling comfortable, feeling like you're good with what you've done, you've gotten those few episodes out there, you really want to make sure you're getting the best out of what you've got. And when I say best out of what you got, I mean focus on getting the maximum out of your equipment. Don't go buy brand new shit. If you got an iPhone, use your iPhone, okay? Figure out how to get that. Like, dude, the best cameras that I have in my studio are my iPhone cameras. And I can, I just, I don't have the time in the, in the Apple equipment to deal with it. I ended up just using a, a lesser quality camera that uses, or that's compatible with my computer mic. You know, and I used to do a live. This camera right here is actually recording the podcast live, but I just don't like how it turns out, man. It actually, I, I enjoy it so much more on an SD card and, and an actual camcorder. To me, it just comes out better. It looks cleaner. And now figuring out my lighting, the way I want to get it with each camera is just the next, next step. So as a podcaster, man, as somebody that does this, does this with no hope of growth, as monetary wise, I don't plan on making money off of this i have if i do one day that'd be cool but to be successful with this man like you need to collaborate with people you need to have successful people in your circle and that's why i started that shit with oshay man i want to see him grow i want to grow i want to grow together with my homies i, I spent like four or five or six hours 
maybe even more, just helping OCA out for free one, one of these days. Because I just offered, I was like, hey, dude, I, I want to build my portfolio up and I want to help you out. Let me do that. Let, give me the opportunity to do that for you and we'll, we'll take it from there, big dog. And so I spent hours editing videos for him, not because I, I wanted to get paid on it, but because I needed a video that was not my podcast to change up what I was doing. You know, I had to build my portfolio, to build my editing, and to push myself to just do something out of the box, out of the ordinary. And if anybody out there, like I said earlier, is looking to collaborate with Youngblood Podcast, we are arms wide open right now, man. We really want to get anybody's name out there that wants to work with us right now it's free dude if you want to fucking get some video editing done by me reach out let's see what happens drop in the comment below i had downloaded an app specifically for adding captions to my videos and it, it, it was not cheap it's something like ten dollars a month and they charge you per minute per word and stuff like that there's free versions too but their watermarks are incredibly difficult so what I ended up doing is saying, you know, man, you just need to bite the bullet and you need to figure out how to do it right. And at that point, that doing some self-growth and sitting down through some tutorials and self-teaching on exactly how to add captions to the video, okay? And not just add captions, but add captions and add animations to where they do stuff, fly off the screen, add memes, add crazy, fun, funky shit to the show. And I'm trying to add retention. I'm trying to get you guys, to get you to really enjoy what you're watching here, to what I have out here, and be proud of what I'm doing and have myself be proud as well. A lot of that's improving there. Adding captions to video with Adobe. Captions with Adobe is not easy, but once you learn it, it's so awesome to have some great knowledge. And the reason I'm making this video is actually so I can do these captions and learn and practice and show you guys, and show you how I've started this process. And let me know what you think of my captions, how I'm doing, how I did it. There's plenty of videos. I'll actually throw the video that I use in the in the description of this video as a shout out because that guy totally i took notes for a couple hours and broke his video down minute by minute and just really learned a lot so i hope you guys find it as a as informative as i found it and i will find that uh link for you guys and make sure that's in the description as well content auditing your content is kind of what i was covering earlier don't be afraid to go back it's like going, it's like as simple as going back to your most popular YouTube video, going back to your most popular YouTube video, and combing through the entire thing, and seeing if it's still relevant. You know, seeing if there's stuff on there that is worth still being posted and talked about. And maybe even consider taking your video, cutting that stuff out, and reposting it. Get it back out there, and start from scratch on that, in a sense. Because what YouTube does is it takes a transcript of every video, and kind of a script of it, and writes it down in it saves that so if you've got the same audio and the same length of a video and it's kind of the same stuff going on youtube algorithm knows that but if you edit it out and you change the video it's a different video hey okay, let's again and in the process of doing that make it better add captions edit the lighting better upscale it to 4k using adobe if you want to know how to do that uh there's plenty of ways to go about it the way i like to do it is i use detail preserving upscale in adobe after effects and i have really found that that does wonders uh for taking my 720 and 1080p episodes and rendering them up into a 4k quality that's not just adding size to the file but actually adding quality not not a bunch of noise and blur but it takes a fuckload of time but one one of my one hour podcasts takes about three hours be, be ready uh, if you want to heat up your room in the winter uh, that's a good way to do it yes but also just be ready to, to put in some grind time or you know be ready to, to set the render that night I tend to do it and use about uh, 75% of my RAM on my computer and that allows me to kind of do some work on YouTube and uh, storage and whatnot. so I can still be productive but it does take up a lot of the computer power Please do not be afraid to comment, get involved, uh, collaborate, shoot me a message. My email address is youngbloodpodcastcolorado at gmail.com. If, if there's any questions or just concerns about the host like that, you know, feel free to shoot me an email. Feel free to shoot me a comment down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. It's been a fantastic Monday podcast. I'm recording this on Sunday so I can get it ready for y'all tomorrow. 
I'll have everything ready and posted up in time and some shorts ready and some editing done, hopefully by Monday for you. Hopefully. And you know, if you guys like what I do here, if you enjoy the Young Blood podcast and you don't care to come on, you don't care to collaborate, but you want to get a part of what I'm doing here, you want to feel a part of what I'm doing here, buy me a cup of coffee, man. I've got a, I've got a Venmo, it's Young Blood Podcast. You know, no spaces, it's spelled all one word, just like that, no funny stuff, Young Blood Podcast. Venmo me a couple bucks, tell me, uh, here's a coffee on me, you know? And check out the YouTube, we've got daily content for you guys, and daily content is not easy to get out there, so I really appreciate every like, subscribe, and comment, and you know, it makes this all worth it at the, in the long run. So thank you again, this has been Young Blood Podcast, check it out, good night.